What about it, YouTube? All right, let's walk around a 1986 Yamaha Tri-Z 250. All right, this guy right here, just recently done. I've still got a little this and that, jetting, front light issues, and I'm gonna change the rear gearing. But uh, it runs beautifully, plenty of compression. And just come back to life. It started out with original wheels. And like what happens so often on the Tri-Z original wheels is they're a little weak. Just double walls and a triple wall like the Banshee. So uh, that's an issue with them that I had to solve. And it started off life looking a lot more like that one. Somebody got happy with the paint can and had spray painted uh, like you see here, that was the front fender off of it originally. Um, I don't have the rear fender out here that came off of it, but it, it got happy with the paint can. Somebody did, and it was rough, but not, um, restorable. This one here might have been the roughest of them all, actually. It may not be the proper example. This one has a little bit more rust on it than the others I got a hold of. Um, got four in total, three 86s and one 85 and a half, they call it. I think this would be more appropriately called the 85 and I think the yellow one should be called the 84. Cause if you look into it, the 84 was out in the springtime of 84 or the 85 yellow one was out in the springtime. It was already in magazines and had aftermarket products developed for it in the springtime. Um, so I don't know what happened there exactly. If they just didn't have it ready to call it an 84 in the fall of 83 and ended up calling it the 85. But the yellow one to me is the actual 84. And this one should actually be the 85. But it's kind of just splitting hairs. The 86 everybody knows is... Got the updates on the front forks, the six-speed transmission, the nine-inch rear rims versus the eight-inch. Swing arm's a little different, um, and the linkage is a little different on the swing arm. Uh, some people don't know that. Uh, anyway, there are some slight differences in them. Mostly the forks were upgraded. And, but like I say, even with the nine inch wheel, it was almost like it was upgrading, but downgrading because nobody had a problem with the 85s busting apart with the double wall, but plenty of people, I think that's the only rim I've got that's decent out of four, four 86 OEM rims. Anyway, so that's, uh, that's the one that hasn't been completely torn down yet. Here's one that's been, that's ready to, that's how I'm starting on it now. The second uh, retro mod or metro rod or whatever you call it. Um, this one had a crack and a famous crack in the clutch cover. So I had to find a, I got another clutch cover for it. Uh, those aren't cheap, but uh, there's a frame that's been powder coated, ready to go. Powder coat color is called super durable red. All right, a lot of people use Red Baron, but you know you, you're not going to find the what's it called Chappie, the the Chappie Red um, perfectly matched to a powder coat, but the Super Durable Red was pretty close, so that's what I chose. And this one's got to be torn down and powder coated, obviously. Um, on the eighty-five and a half. There's a. A little tri motor that's pretty badass with a with a PK pipe that you'll never be able to find. I found it new actually. Paid five hundred bucks for that pipe, and this little sucker will scream. It tried to kill me. It's another story for another time. But uh, I got to figure out what's going on with it. But it's in the, it's a fun little machine. I put the it's a one twenty five, but I put the one seventy five front end on it, and I found the little front racks kind of cool. Um. So another day, me me and this this one's got to get back together and see what all went wrong. There's the motor that is uh, 
off of that one up there that had the broken clutch cover so the clutch cover has been taken off but back to the story here on this one so this is the first one i've uh got running completed whatever you want to call it luckily the motor's got plenty of compression not a problem uh started you know quite easily once i once i was ready with new spark plug oil change and all that so let's go over right quick some of the things i might need to make um, specific videos on some of this just leave it in the comments if you want me to go in depth on anything more but uh, some things are obvious i chose to do the super durable red on the front on the headlight guard and on the radiator guards there just something i think i prefer so i did it um some might say why is your front wheel like that well if you look at any street bike you will notice that that's what they do okay that's what they do there's another street bike tire all right so i just followed the plan and uh it steers like a dream i mean it turns on a dime anybody that has one of these you can see that the steering rake is very sharp and it's offset with the fork rake um trach and rail is something or yeah rail and uh gosh now i'm getting all mixed up but as far as like your uh steering goes on these um, it steers very sharp rake and trail. That's what I'm trying to think of The rake and trail you can just tell stock you've got tons of rake and trail which gives you caster which avoids Speed wobbles now. I've never ridden one that has the upgrade supposedly upgraded upside down forks but by having your axle in the front your your and whatever offset or non offset they choose on your uh, whatever C CNC custom um, triple trees that you're gonna have to come up with on your upside down forks so guys that do that that you just need to sort of keep in mind that you're completely changing the rake and trail of the machine and going from tons of rake and trail to probably hardly any at all if you're if you make your fork angle the same as your steering angle and you have your axle in the front of that fork tube You've got virtually zero rake and trail, and I don't know. I've never ridden one, so I don't know how they do, but it would seem like you'd be coming up with speed wobble problems a lot more. Now, I think I might have used a, a heavier fork oil in this. Can't remember for sure, but I've not had any problem really bottoming out or feeling like the front end is um, a problem seems to be soaking up jumps or whatever i mean or you know whatever i do it's, it just seems to handle it just fine i've actually been very impressed with the handling not tippy not sketchy awesome okay so the first thing out of the box that i noticed was that it had hardly any if any top end and i took the air box cover off underneath the uh cover here and all of a sudden it came to life a lot more got the jetting a lot closer i've still got to do some work comes with i think a 135 or i mean a 35 pilot i i got a 30 in the garage i'm going to probably put in it um so that's stepping down twice and i might step it down one on the main from a 320 to a 310 uh it's a little rich is what i'm trying to get to but uh not not awful bad starts real easy um so happy with how everything came together overall now as far as maybe what you'd suggest as upgrades this guy on ebay i don't remember his name you'll see him all over the place but these these pegs are a choice all right these uh foot guard foot stands whatever they call them they are choice all right i highly recommend paying the money for upgraded foot stands mine were Kind of typically sagging wore out stock all right and then as far as the rear wheel i was talking about 
before these are banshee rear rims that have been powder coated gold and uh way stronger triple wall um they're 415 rather than 400 on the dimensions between lugs so you've got to get the banshee hubs if you get the banshee rims but they're stronger and that's what i went with so there's that then obviously powder coated the tank guard gold same color i'm going to change the gearing here i got a 42 on the rear and a 14 on the front stock is 44 in the rear 13 on the front so that's like about a four and a half tooth uh difference and the only other difference would be the one inch of the rear tires going the other direction from 21 to 20. so i think i've gone like you know top speed on this thing is probably really good but uh as far as like you know jumping up wheelies it's it's not probably what it could be so i'm going to go to the 44 back to the 44 rear sprocket and keep the 14 front and that'll bring it closer to stock on all the gearing as far as you know top speed and and torque at the bottom and all that um motor i kind of left the patina i didn't do i didn't really spend the time to try to paint or anything because i want to be able to just hop on this and ride and not worry about my shoe or my boot you know doing something or you know so i just i kind of left a little patina here and there on the on some of the usable parts or used parts like the rear brake caliper it's, it, it's dusty and dirty now but it it's just kind of cleaned up the bottom guard was powder coated black uh but like I say, I left the patina on the master cylinder there and the motor. Uh, I was able to find moto hoses. Uh, I can't find them anymore um, for this. I'd like to get another set maybe. Um, kept the boost bottle. I've heard a guy saying it's snake oil. I don't believe him. I think a boost bottle is not snake oil. It doesn't have a power valve and it's kind of like um, something that... Uh, helps the low end especially if you don't have a power valve okay the pipe is a stock pipe but it's been uh ceramic coated or powder coated with high heat powder coat black and that holds up really well and i love it uh the guards coated that way the same and i found a gasket that i was able to cut down and I don't have much, well, I do have some leaks. I mean, these are things that are famous for leaks uh, right there at the motor. But it does pretty good. Um, let's see, DG si silence over there. And JT front sprocket, JT O-ring chain. And it'll end up with a JT aluminum 44 sprocket when I'm done. The rear suspension is another issue because uh, it's not impossible, but it's difficult maybe to rebuild the stock shock on these. So looked around for solutions. One of them I was able to find is 2001 Raptor 660 shock. And you can see there that the reservoir takes the place of the coolant reservoir. So... The, there's been a coolant reservoir delete also I deleted the I took out the thermostat so it just free flows no thermostat no uh, over overflow thing no uh, reservoir for the coolant and uh, just like a dirt bike all right so you got the 660 shock but now for the linkage it's got a 86 okay so it's 86 swing arm and 86. Uh, shock mount but the dog bone is off a warrior 350 i believe or no 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 it might be a raptor 350 i think a raptor 350 or a banshee dog bone will work but it's got to be longer so it's got a longer dog bone than stock to fit the shock and give it a reasonable overall 
stance and height, uh, which is I think is pretty close. I mean, if you look at it, it's it's not bad at all, right? It's not too aggressive and it's not too weak. So I'm happy with how that overall worked out. Um, you can take a Warrior 350 entire linkage and get it to work, but the dog bone it's backwards and the dog bone will point down at the at the ground a lot more aggressively and uh, just aesthetically and everything I don't think it and maybe even functionally it's not ideal so I went with this uh, what else can we talk about um, found this seat cover in Europe I wanted something that had Yamaha on the back but you can see it wasn't exactly printed correctly red wool is an inside joke from high school we won't go into right now um there's under the seat action uh you can see i deleted the uh complex system of tank breather and i simply have a tank breather there it likes to have a two-way breather on it it was developing pressure in the tank with a one-way breather so I changed that to a two-way breather but you can still get this thing in the water good enough can't you I think so if that's what you want to do doesn't need to be completely submarine uh, I did as far as motor motor modifications not much just this thing they call a boost block I think moose makes it moose racing boost block and boys and reeds uh, the motor like I say, it seems, oh, man, dude, it it's like crazy compression. Um, so I didn't mess with it. I haven't tested, I haven't checked it, the numbers on it, but it's not easy to kick over. Um, it's got plenty of compression, so that's a blessing. I don't have to really uh, mess with the top end right now. Uh, the clutch seems to be holding up just fine. And uh, you never know what you're going to get when it comes to buying something that needs a heavy restoration. But the thing that intrigued me was there wasn't much wear on the sprockets. Uh, came with stock tires that weren't completely bald. I mean, those are, those are pretty worn. But front tires on these, I mean, are stock. But like that one there's got... Quite a bit of tread for being stock. And those kind of things can uh, help you determine how many hours are on the machine. So I figured, you know, it hasn't, it, has, it looks like it's got stock tires, stock, uh, I mean, you know, from the day it was bought, um, sprockets and things that will indicate whatever wear. And not bad, not bad. Uh, so this is the, the first attempt oh i didn't talk about the steering this is probably one of the best things i come up with we'll close with this all right these are rocks two inch bar risers and you can see how i've got them set up all right if you watch or if you ride these things when i was when i was like sitting on them before i started this i was like man this is some cramped ergonomics bad and that's what i've come up with to solve the problem and I got them set up with the Pro Taper 7 8 inch. You know what I mean? Like the rocks accept it, and then this accepts down here. So it all works out. The Raptor ATV bend on the Pro Taper bars. I love it, man. I love it. it this, to me, this is one of the best upgrades you can do is extend that uh, reach and give yourself some more spread out ergonomics. And uh, the ASV clutch lever, I'd have to probably make a video just on that. There were some modifications that had to happen to make that fit. Um, I rebuilt the master cylinder. Actually did a video on that and put some watch glass in there to fix it. Um, yeah, this isn't the stock switch here. But... Uh, yeah, it works. Like I say I got I got some light issues, but uh, I can solve that. Anyway, this is the '86, the first one I've got finished uh, or running. Um, 
of my little projects that I set up for myself during COVID. This is the first one. God bless.